course, all want our kids to do well in school. We tell them to study. We offer help and encouragement. Sometimes, though, that's just not enough. Well, we here at Fox 12 have been able to uncover some secrets to success thanks to some of the top students in the entire country. New this morning, Fox 12's Anna Katayama joins us with what she learned by doing her own homework on some exceptional kids. Good morning, Anna. Yeah, these are some really sweet kids who are doing some amazing things as far as their research. Um, we found these kids because the Society of Science does a competition every year to inspire young scientists and innovators. And this year it turns out that of the top 300 middle school scientists in the entire country, five of them are from the Beaverton School District. I got to meet all five and their parents. And simply put, we wanted to know how they got so smart. They enjoy their sports and music and they have a curiosity about the world around them. For a long time, I've been really interested in climate change and how it affects the world everywhere. And uh, I've been reading and researching a lot about it recently. And then I wanted my project to be based off of climate change and what we could do to fix it. And even the smallest things can help. These are your local winners in the Society for Sciences Broadcom Masters STEM competition. Middle schoolers were invited to submit a science project. Aashi Dixit explored how to use ultrasound and elastography to detect breast cancer cells. Elizabeth Shen explored low-cost chemical and physical methods for cleaning up oil spills. When I was younger, I really loved animals, so I read a lot about them. From that, I learned about the Gulf of Mexico oil spill and all the hundreds and thousands of organisms that died there. So. I want to do something that could diminish the impact of such a calamity. She concluded that a three-dimensional mesh with a specific pore size is most effective. Nitya Shah wanted to improve on the Tesla. He designed a car that can recognize pedestrians' hand signals. Max Jewett proposes combating global warming by putting calcium hydroxide in ocean water to make it more alkaline so that it absorbs carbon from the atmosphere. Chanifu Bodhipaksha designed a machine that uses an absorbent to remove carbon dioxide from environmental air. I did a bunch of research on my project and I learned that potassium hydroxide was a good absorbent for CO2. Academically, these kids are knocking it out of the ballpark. In some cases, even their parents are surprised. When Nitya started his project, he told me what he's going to do. Uh, and I, I didn't tell him on, on his face, but I thought, this is never, he's never going to pull it off, right? But he did it. And I was like stunned by like, wow, you did all this by yourself. And uh, so they surprised me all the time with uh, what they can do and achieve at this young age, I think. They range in age from 12 to 14 years old and attend Stoller and Whitford Middle Schools. On average, they say they do about two and a half hours of homework a day and get eight hours of sleep. Nothing too out of the ordinary. But the one unifying characteristic seems to be that their parents expose them to what's happening in the world outside of classroom walls. I, I encourage them to look at the world around them to see what problems are there and if they can fix something. We always get the theory from the school, but what is, the, what is the application? Bodhi Paksha says showing kids how the math and science they learn in the classroom can be applied in the real world motivates learning and helps keep curiosity alive. The kids admit studying can be a chore and they don't always want to do it, but they say it can also be a source of joy. The process is hard, but when you accomplish something, that feeling of reward isn't just momentary, it's something that's long-term and will help you in the future. So I really enjoy that feeling and it's very empowering. There's a different sort of feeling you get when you learn something new and you understand it completely and it's something that you hadn't learned about before and it's really hard to understand and as you said, the reward is really nice. Their parting advice, have confidence in yourself, even if the material isn't coming easy. And as with so much else in life, be relentless. During a project, a lot of times you feel like, okay, maybe I should just stop now. But you should not stop because after the block, you're going to reach a new level in your project that'll allow you to get new ideas and you're, you're gonna regret it later if you don't continue on a project that you were really feeling passionate about. And an interesting note is that of the 300 kids selected nationally in this science competition, the majority of them, 62% of them, come from public schools. Kim and Chana, back to you. Just they, impressive. They are remarkable kids. Okay, so we saw a video, we saw them playing cricket, cooking, <laughs> ping pong, playing musical instruments. Did you find that there's anything, any similarities when it comes to extracurriculars among these kids? So the one thing, the one thing that we found common to all five of them is they take music lessons. They play. Um 
all of them play two instruments. I think one of them wow. plays one. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if there's, you know, a correlation, a cause effect thing, but yeah. they definitely all t uh, take music lessons. And one of the girls said that the discipline it takes to study music mm -hmm. helped her in school. So Makes that's sense. Incredible. And right? I, I know music does open up your brain a little bit, right? I know yeah. I've heard stories, studies mm -hmm. about math and music and right. the connection there. That is just so, it's so great to meet them. Yeah, great yes. story. We're so proud that they're Oregonians. Mm -hmm. I know, from right here. <laughs> yes. Thank you, yeah. Anna. You're welcome.